All right. Good afternoon, evening, good night, everybody out there. Uh, just getting set up. Um, and tonight we are going to talk all about low clarinets. Hello, Ratchet. Ratchet, you're in here all the time, and I, I don't know who you are by your username. Um, you mind telling me? Because I, I feel like we probably know each other just without the, uh, you know, the I just don't know uh, your username. Um, let me know if sound quality is coming in good. Um, should be, video quality should be okay, I'm hoping. Uh, hey, Jared. Um, <laughs> thanks for stealing my, my thunder with your, uh, your alto clarinet one. Um, hey, Patrick. Uh, I'm not going to touch on a lot of what you said on your, um, your live stream the other day, Jared. So we'll talk more uh, composing and that stuff. Hello, that random girl on the interwebs. Uh, so tonight we're going to talk all about um, low clarinets. And since I've got, looks like, about nine people in here, I will make the announcement that on Sunday afternoon, 2 p.m. Central Time, I don't have this set up uh, uh, as a live stream yet, but... We are going to have a big, massive live stream um, event. God, don't worry, Jerry. Um, um, let me see if I can uh, change the, the video resolution. I don't know if I can do that midstream. Let me see really quickly. Um, That may fix it some, what I just did. Um, hopefully, fingers crossed it works. Um, but anyway, Sunday, 2 p.m. Central Time. We are going to have a massive live stream event. Uh, I'm going to have a guest here, and he is going to have with him a couple of very rare instruments. So get ready um, for everything you ever wanted to know about the bass oboe and the piccolo oboe because we'll have both of those instruments here in studio and we'll probably have a big two hour long live stream event and uh yeah we'll have those instruments here available to get everything you wanted to know about those instruments and we'll have a bunch of stuff available on that But anyway, um, since it looks like I got about 13 people here, um, uh, go ahead and let's hit me with any questions you have about low clarinets. I have all my clarinet collection here. I uh, see I've got my, my bass clarinet here. Um, and... Uh, no duduk. Uh, no, I don't have a duduk. Um, one of these days I, I might get one, but at the moment, no duduk. But yeah, I'll, we're going to talk all clarinets tonight. And for low clarinets, we're going to talk basically everything. Um, I think we probably should talk G clarinet on down. And I've got my uh, G clarinet here. This is a Jared DeLeon special. <laughs> this is the instrument that he uh, changed from um, simple system to quasi berm system. Uh, and then I've put on it um, a cheap aftermarket wooden bell. And then I've got a barrel here that I uh, personally angled. So uh, how does the curved wood barrel work on the G clarinet? It works okay. Um, let me just go ahead and kind of Ugh. Ugh. 
I have terrible luck uh, being able to switch quickly mouthpieces on instruments. So that went, that was off of the A clarinet onto the G. <laughs> you can hear a little bit hopefully the um for about three weeks i was the only alto clarinet owner in my state until i sold it to the local wind orchestra for five bucks what state is that i have a feeling that uh there are probably more out there than you know yes alto clarinets are not that uncommon. Why isn't it standard for bass clarinets to be keyed down to low D yet? Um, well, because bass clarinets standardly for professional instruments are keyed down to low C. Have I tried lanolin court grease? Um, no, I had... Oh, South Australia might be different. Yeah, I thought you were talking um, um, U.S. I'm an amateur tenor slash berry sax player. I've always loved the rich, woody tone of the bass clarinet. What are some of the challenges associated with the learning clarinet for sax players? The embouchure. It uh, really is the embouchure and the voicing. Though bass clarinet, uh, coming off a of tenor sax, won't be that big of an issue. Um, I love how that sounds. Are G clarinets common enough to be scored frequently? Um... <laughs> no, they are not common enough to be scored frequently. So since I've got it in hand, let's talk about scoring for this instrument. Um, so there's only one composer out there that is crazy cuckoo enough to score for... Uh, stream is pretty far behind. Is that usually the case? Yes. Yes, it is. It's about 20 seconds behind when I normally, uh, when I'm seeing this. So that's, that's just live stream in general. So, okay, back to scoring for G clarinet. So we'll take this as our highest, um, our highest, uh, low clarinet. So we call this a G alto clarinet mezzo-soprano maybe but you know with it going down to that rich low b uh it's really an alto voice i mean it's it's really even down into bordering on the range of the tenor voice but it's, it's a true alto voice so only one composer out there is not so cuckoo enough to write for a G clarinet, and that's um, the composer that's not so cuckoo enough to own two of them. And if I ever get enough money, I will buy a third. I'll buy actually one of those, um, the berm systems. And I know Jared's had a, a couple of those, and I'm going to be interested to see um, how those work in comparison to this Jared special. Um, but um, basically, uh, this instrument here, and Jared talked about this some on his last live stream. If you have not watched that, go check it out. Uh, but it's it, it would be great for um, a third clarinet part or even a fourth clarinet part for um, pieces that have uh, three or four regular B-flat clarinet parts. Uh, Aster, that is so weird. Uh YouTube said that your <laughs> um, comment was hidden. For I think it thought it had a uh, a bad word in it. Weird. Uh, but yeah, you're you're absolutely right. The range is like a viola. In fact, the range is exactly the same as the um, the um, bass oboe, which we'll have here in studio on Sunday. What figuring system do most clarinets use? Uh, the most commonly seen is the the berm system. It's really, it should be called a closet system after Hyacinth Closet. 
Uh, so you see, I, this is my A clarinet here. And let me just grab my uh, other G clarinet really quickly so you can actually see a... Uh... Interesting, Jared. So, um... Okay. So this is... Um... This is my um, unmodified G. So this is, it's gotten severely tarnished for whatever reason, but so we can compare here the uh, G versus the A, and you can see really a vast difference in the two fingering systems here. Um, and uh, the, the Berm system, the French system has a lot more key work, is able to do a little bit more. Um, a full German system, uh, Euler system, will have more keys than this. In fact, I've actually taken one key off of this instrument. It comes with an alternate um, A flat, E flat, which actually gets in the way. Okay. Uh, da -da -dum. I've seen online that bass clarinets in A, metal bass clarinets exist, but why aren't metal bass clarinets more common? Um, uh, it's a good question. The general stigma is you just don't want um, your instruments in metal. Um, the, the little bit added weight that the wood or rubber provides helps out, uh, but there's no reason they couldn't be in metal. What's the deal with extensions on low clarinets? Do they have so, the same kind of thing on lower saxes with low A's and such? Okay, so good question there. Um, Lower clarinet, so we'll grab bass clarinet here for example. Um, so, uh, so we've got a bass clarinet here. Now this bass clarinet is uh, a low E flat instrument. It only goes down to low E flat. Oh, I got a leak somewhere. This bass clarinet's all sorts of leaky though. Uh, professional bass clarinets, though, will go down um, minor third below this, and um, it will go down all the way down to a written C, which will sound B flat. And most of that is because of the Russians. The Russians would score frequently down there, assuming that the bass clarinets could uh, play the same low note as the bassoon. All right, there's a lot going on, and I will try and get to everything... Um, Okay, um, so yeah, the only uh, clarinet that's not generally extended down to low C in the low section is the alto clarinet. There, you have never really been able to get an alto clarinet extended to low C. You can get one custom made. Um, Steve Fox will do it, no problem. In fact, Steve has sent me all the um, specs in how to do it. Okay, so John Spence has asked, why do composers write differently for Barry Sax and bass clarinets when they have similar, if not same range? Because they're not the same instrument. Just because you have two instruments in the same range does not mean you treat them the same. Uh, bass clarinet, Barry Sax, euphonium, bassoon, uh, bass trombone, cello, these instruments all have the same general range, but each one has an absolutely different function. If I want, it, it depends on, um, it depends on the function and the kind of thing you're writing. If I want a soft, sustained bass note, I put that on a bass clarinet and they're happy to do that all day long. If I want a much more rhythmic, uh, aggressive woodwind sound, I'm going to put that on a Barry Sax. If I want something maybe more lyrical, I'll put that on a bassoon. So it, it's all about function on those. Um, the er, yeah, so, da -da -dum. so, yeah, so I think Ratchet answered a bunch of those questions. Um, Baritone sax is bottom of sax section bass clarinet. Um, Patrick, I would actually argue that you could probably write faster stuff for saxophones than you can for bass clarinet. Uh, simply because the key work is so much simpler. 
Um, well, bass clarinets are more like the tenor role in the clarinet choir. No, bass clarinets are not a, a tenor instrument. And the, the, I, the idea that the bass clarinet is a, a tenor voice comes about because it shares the same transposition as the B flat tenor sax. But it shares the same range as the um, the berry sax. So I've always found that the upper register of the bass clarinet and this bass clarinet does not like playing above written G because there's a, at least one leak in it somewhere. Uh, it's just not a tenor voice. Whereas the alto clarinet will happily do that same thing. And that was, you know, terrible me butchering it. But yeah, this is really a, a tenor voice. Um, so I'm sure Jared will, better than, oh man, um, okay, so much, so much going on, Cachetarian bass clarinet solo, earliest bass clarinets went to low C, yes, but those were the bassoon shaped ones, and they were probably the actual C instruments, in fact, they probably went to B flat, we're talking about disappointing writing for Barry Saxon's last stream, that's a separate problem, uh, yes, if you want to, yes, check out your spasm. Michael Lowenstern is a god of the bass clarinet. Uh, Jared, message me offline. I can get you those um, low C alto clarinet specs. Uh, he sent me um, all the measurements for the tone holes. Um, okay, uh, oh God, there's so much here. Um, most orchestral and band works have separate bassoon, uh, have two separate bassoon parts. Why not two separate bass clarinet parts? Okay, this is a question I love here. Um, why not two separate bass clarinet parts? I totally agree. Uh, I, in fact, the, the chances of getting two bass clarinets in most bands is higher than getting two bassoons. Why? Well, there's more clarinet players out there than there are bassoon players. Why? Clarinet's easier than bassoon. And it's cheaper. So, you know, um, I think there are a lot of composers who are moving towards that to have two uh, bass clarinet parts. And this is really a, a more recent phenomenon. Back in the early days of the modern wind band, say the 19, um, 1900, 1950, 1960, um, finding bass clarinets in a wind band was not common. You did not see it. English wind bands just didn't have low clarinets at all. No alto clarinet, no bass clarinet. Uh, in American wind bands, you might have one of each. Uh, but today, we're treating bass clarinet essentially as its own separate instrument. So you've got flute. So and when we start uh, players, we start them on flute, we start them on oboe, we start them on clarinet, we start them on bass clarinet, we start them on alto sax, we start them on bassoon. So, yeah, we should be writing more bass clarinet parts. I absolutely agree. Um, um, da -da 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 okay. Although I don't know why you would have two ba bass clarinets when you can stick a, con a contralto down there for that extra pedal goodness. Uh, okay. Um, well, why not two bass clarinets and a contra alto? Remember, it's always two words. It has to be two words. Contralto. This is a contralto clarinet, which is why I call it a tenor. And the, the big one is a great bass. Uh, why not both? Because they can both serve different roles. I mean, look at it. Look at an orchestra. How many cellos are there? A good orchestra will have eight to ten, maybe even up to twelve cellos. How many basses are supporting that? Six, eight, ten in a huge orchestra? Um, and so there's a lot you could do with that. And think about doing the same thing with a band, and you would use the same numbers of bass clarinets or berry saxes. 
would you recommend scoring for a Bassett Horn? Um, Aiden, no, I would not. Um, here's why. Uh, I live in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and in this area, I in it's a population like between it's like seven or eight million people. I can account right now in that whole population ten Bassett Horns total. Um, two of those are owned by the Fort Worth Symphony. University of North Texas owns. Four, two pairs, an old pair and a brand new pair. Baylor University owns a pair. And then I think one private individual owns a pair. And that's it. If you want to score for those instruments, you have to go seek those out or be in one of those organizations. Even the big Dallas Symphony does not own a pair of bass clarinets. Um, what do I think of a bassoon-shaped bass clarinet? I don't think you need it. I think the bass clarinets, the the fewer bends in an instrument, the better it will be. The, it, you are better off keeping instruments as straight as possible. The only two pieces I can think of off the top of my head that have two bass clarinets are the Rite of Spring and Ghost Train. Uh, check out any of John Mackey's pieces. They almost always have two bass clarinet parts. Um, if we're looking at orchestral stuff, look at uh, Gurleader, of course. Look at... Uh, Schoenberg's Pelios and Melisande. Um, what else has two bass clarinets? Uh, I'm sure I can think of some. A lot of my works have um, have two bass clarinets. Okay, uh, so much here um, to go on. Okay, um, Adolf Sachs happened to it. Um, what happened to... Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, play Molly on the Shore on the B-flat clarinet. No. I'm not a clarinetist, guys. I am a bassoonist. Saxophone is my secondary. Uh, clarinet's like my tertiary or quaternary. I play the alto clarinet and it's great, but when I got it, it did not come with a floor peg. Don't like playing with the neck strap. Is it worth investing in? Oh, God, yeah. Floor peg? Get a floor peg. They are super easy. So this floor peg, I paid 90 bucks for it's a it's a good one um and i soldered it on myself so 100 bucks total boom you got a four peg do it i like two bases great bass and contra bass hopefully also an octo contra yeah that would be absolutely fantastic and such a um it'd be such a rich and meaty section in my uh symphony number three i actually have a few sections where it's four bass clarinets and a um, great bass and a contrabass. Oh, 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 I just remembered a piece. I've got to um, get my, my book out here real quick. It, there is a, a uh, Schoenberg piece. I believe it's his opus 21. Opus 22. Um... Give me a second. There it is. There it is. Okay, so uh, Opus Twenty Two, uh, Movement Three of for Arnold Schoenberg. This is just fantastic. Here, it is three bass clarinets and contrabass clarinet, and this is nineteen twenty or nineteen twenty one, and it's pretty darn amazing. It's just this rich, massive sound. Uh, one alto clarinet player to another. You can get a peg fitted to yours. Yes. Uh, straight berry sax. I have a friend who has a straight berry sax. I kid you not. I went to um, go to his repair shop every now and then. He's an instrument repair tech. And um, 
Yeah, yeah, he he has a straight Barry sax. And a straight trombone. Took a trombone and completely straightened it out. Uh, Julia, any um, any repair tech can do that um, <laughs> easily. The moment when you forget about John Mackey. That's yeah, okay. You just, uh, Mozart era straight conjure should come back. Um, until you have to play one in a pit. And therein, you're done. Uh, the, the modern contrabassoon was designed so that it could um, play in a pit. Huh. Your, your basset horn is actually an old instrument from North Texas. That means they've had more. Uh, one number of West Side Story scored four bass clarinets. A boy like that knack, too. Interesting. I, you know, uh, my sister was just in West Side Story, and they used a, a canned soundtrack just because... Um, uh, <laughs> um, because there's no room for a pit nor budget. Uh, I want to hear that. Straight Barry Sacks must sound awful. Yeah, straight trombone. He, he took a trombone. It's just hanging up there. And yes, my friend is named David. Um, uh, yeah, his, his shop is kind of a mecca of awesomeness. I tried going down there actually uh, Tuesday, but he's closed on Tuesdays. Um, I'm going to try and work out something with him where I can borrow one of his weird instruments and do uh, videos on it. Like he's got an F alto sax and a G treble flute and an E flat soprano flute and all this just... You know, great stuff. Uh, okay, I think I've gotten through all that. Wow, that, that was just a lot. Okay, but yeah, no, David's Repair Shop. Oh, okay. All right. So let's... Yes, that, that's his his F alto. Uh, I've played on it before. Oh my God, is it, it a beautiful instrument? Evidently, he just got a curve stopper Nino and has a tenor rune. If it's not there yet, uh, will be there soon. I've seen a straight alto sax in person. Um, it's not at the shop anymore, so I think it's sold. Uh, you can get uh, straight altos from China, the, um, but the original ones are the old Bishers from the 1920s. And they not only are mostly straight, they have a mostly straight neck, too. Um, yeah, his, his store is um, really, really cool. Um, it, you know, I'm torn. I've got two favorite instrument repair techs I go to. And David just has more instruments. He has Targato. He has a D clarinet. He's got a metal oboe. He's got a sax oboe. I mean, it's like I go in, what new weird instruments you got, David? Uh, I got this. You know, he's got a bass sack sitting there. It's in Carrollton, Texas. Why make them straight? Uh, it's why make uh, sax, those saxophones straight? Novelty reasons, uh, by and large. Uh, stuff like that was done really uh, heavily in the 1920s. Um, they're in the big sax craze and they would just make as many kind of novelty sizes and shapes as possible. Uh, yeah, so his, his short store is, is fantastic. It, the Targato is the weird conical clarinet. Yes. Hey, uh, Jared, he might have, um, uh, David Shottle. For weirdly unbent instruments that look something out of a Dr. Seuss group, group Les Snob. Can you get F altos, baritones, and C uh, tenor sopranos from any website or something? No. Well, you can get C tenors. Um, F, you, F baritones have never been made. They don't exist. They're a myth. C Sopranos come up for sale every now and then. You can probably find one or two on eBay. F Altos are the rarest of that group. Um, um, they maybe a few hundred of them were made. I don't. Um, I I don't know how many. 
but they come up every now and then. I did a workshop with John Mackey this past year in his piece, Lightning Field. It was really cool. He was a very nice person. Not a question, just thought I would share. He, he yeah, can't be a, a nice person. Um, um, I, you know, I've, I've had some conversations with him on and off. So, yeah, t C tenors are easy. I've got a C melody in the back room. Uh... Steven, I know this is a clarinet show, but did you ever read the book The Devil's Horn? You discussed weird instruments for the 1920s, reminding me of stuff I read in that book. I have not read it. Uh, when I was talking with Paul Cohen, he basically told me to avoid that book at all costs because there's so many um, factual errors in there that it's, um, he just said, it's not worth your time. Uh, they go under the guy's C Melody Sax if you want to find him. Yeah. So, okay, let's talk low clarinets. And do we want to go uh, bottom up or top down? Let's go bottom up. That's fun. And I think we'll have Jared uh, type some. Jared, you going to be ready to talk uh, octo stuff? Because we're going to start down there. So, um, of course, we have, have Mr. Octo Contra Alto and Octo Contra Bates in the room. Um, these two instruments, the pitched just way down in the basement register, have um, never been used. Uh, obviously, because only two instruments um, currently exist in complete form. Uh, Jared's instruments aside, um, they have been mentioned in textbooks on and off since the inception of the octo contrabass. Um, Anthony Baines, in his Woodwind Instruments and Their History, uh, talks about the octo contrabass. It talks about it sounding like something out of the Jurassic era, which I think is quite apropos. Um, uh, these instruments are not solo instruments, of course. Um, they are accompaniment instruments at best. Um, and in order to write for these instruments, you need to write for them at least in pair with the instrument an octave higher. So if you're going to write, uh, we'll take Jared's Octo Contra Alto. And I still think that's a, a, a cumbersome name. Um, I, I, I like Bourdon clarinet. One word, Bourdon. Uh, okay, yeah, so I... Okay, Jared, on that, I reread his post, and he was referring to his subcontrabass saxophone. So, um, that was it. And, and so, I, I misread it. It's his subcontrabass saxophone, which he does have, and I've seen photos of that one. Anyway, so, if you're going to be writing for one of Jared's stupid huge clarinets, um... You have got to pair it with at least an octave higher. And this is just to reinforce that non-existent first harmonic. Uh, octo clarinet. Well, octo just means eight. Um, so it's not really a, a good designation for it. Um, if we look... Um, Uh, yeah, if we look, um, Adolf Sax's patent called the subcontrabass uh, saxophone, uh, saxophone bourdon. And bourdon was one of those terms that was used quite a bit. It's used in uh, organ terminology. So you have like your contra stop and then you have your bourdon stop. So I, I find that would be a, uh, a probably a, a better term. And it's so much less of a mouthful. But Back to scoring. So you do have to pair it with at least an octave higher, if not two octaves higher. And this is um, basic organ registration. So if you're sitting at an organ and you want to play the bottom note of a huge organ, which is a 32-foot C, which is roughly the lowest note of the octo contrabass clarinet. In fact, it is the lowest note of the LeBlanc um Bacto. No, yeah, no. Um, so if you want to hear that note, you can't just play the 32-foot stop. 
you've got to pull out the 32. You've got to pull out the 16. And if you pull out both the 32 and the 16, you're going to hear it and you're going to feel it. If you want to hear it even more, you're going to pull out an 8 foot. So you've got 32, 16, and 8. And then you're really going to hear it. And that would be pairing an octo contrabass clarinet, a contrabass clarinet, and a bass clarinet together and just put them in this massive power octave. And in doing that, uh, you now have something rock steady for your bass. Now, this is not something you want to do all the time. Um, when organists use that register, it is usually like the climax of the piece. I remember the first time I ever heard live Box Pasacaglia and Fugue in C minor. And the, it's just this massive sound right at the end. You pull out that 32 foot stop and it's just like, oh, I can die happy. That just feels good. And it's, it's one of those, it's, you're not going to hear it, but my God, do you feel it? And it's just like spiritual. It's great. Clarinet Grande. Okay, Jared, I have a score and I got to finish printing the score out where the term Clarinet Grande or something like that is used. Um, and in fact, it's actually the term um, Grossa Clarinet. It's a German score. And... You know what the Grossa clarinet is? <laughs> B-flat clarinet. And then he has the middle clarinet, which is the E-flat clarinet. And then there is the Kleine clarinet, which is the A-flat. So he has an A-flat, an E-flat, and a B-flat. It calls him Kleine, middle, Grossa. It's um, scored by Wilhelm Wieprecht. And I would love to one day do like a bio um, um, video on Vprect. Hi guys, lots of new people in the room. Um, oof, uh, you talking about the uh, small A flat clarinet? Okay, so let's go ahead and move up the ladder. Talk to our octo contras, Jared. If there's anything you want to fill in, um, uh, please feel free to. But as there's still um, ratchet, it's a flat clarinet is not as bad as you think. I've played one once, and surprisingly, you know, as, as screechy as the E flat clarinet is. Um, the A flat clarinet is pretty sweet sounding. Um, it, yeah. Andrew, I'd be surprised, I'd be interested to know who had, um, a, an A flat clarinet. Do I own any Contras myself? Uh, no. Um, I have an offer to get one. I have a friend who has one and... Uh, money has been so tight lately that the, it, I, the instrument is sitting there waiting for me. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's an old Bundy uh, E-flat Contra Alto, great bass. Um, but I just don't have it yet. It's, um, uh, yeah, impossible to tune. It, beyond impossible to tune, actually. <clears throat> But eventually, yes, I will be getting an E flat contra. So let, let's talk about our, our two contras. So there are two contra based clarinets, as I think everybody in the room knows. There's one in E flat and there's one in B flat. And the history of them is bizarre. Adolf Sachs uh, produced one in E flat. And I have a picture of it somewhere. It's actually, I think it's in the back room right now. Um, and he called uh, the E flat instrument a contrabass. Uh, the first ones were actually made by Vprecht, and that name just keeps coming up. Uh, he was that had that band score I was talking about, but uh, Vprecht also invented the the bathophone. Um, and uh, Jared talked about that on his last video. 
so Vprec not only invented the um, the contrabass clarinet, but also the tuba and the modern wind band. So go figure. And, and all all modern wind bands are based on Vprec Vprec principles. Um, but anyway, so very rarely is a band piece or orchestra piece for that matter going to use both an E flat contra or a B flat contra. And we'll talk about some exceptions to that. Um, there was a time when everybody just used the E flat contra because it was the most widely available. It was much cheaper, it, easier to make, easier to carry around. And so that's just what everybody uses, the E flat contra alto or contra bass clarinet. By the way, the, the actual term contra alto did not come about until about 1960. It was a um, marketing uh, thing by LeBlanc Corporation. And it is only, they only came out with that term with their new e flat Contra clarinet, particularly their uh, new paperclip model that went down to low C. That was the first Contra alto clarinet. Selmer had been looking um had been summer had been making a e flat contra clarinet since about 1930 um if not a little bit before that um but today most composers are just saying we're just going to write for the b flat contra clarinet and forget that the e flat exists now this is fine and you know if I had to pick one or the other, I'd think, well, I, I need those extra low notes of the B-flat Contra. Um, the A-flat owner was a Navy man by the name of Shadrach in the Overland Park community band. Their library is deep enough to hold to, to have pieces with parts for it. He was relocated to Texas. Interesting. I... I Sounds like someone I should get in touch with. Um, so, um, you don't see a lot of composers today including parts for the E-flat contra clarinet, which is a shame because it's actually the more versatile instrument. Um, it's easier to play. It has a bigger range. Um, so, but the B-flat contra clarinet uh, just has those extra low notes and when you're dealing uh, yes I like the E flat contra as a low melodic voice I think that's one way it's definitely better than the B flat contra yes B flat contra as a melodic instrument is piss poor it just does not do that stuff well it's uh, clarino range is really wonky and it doesn't really go easily into the altissimo. Now, someone like my friend Jason Alder can make that thing sing. Or his teacher, uh, Sarah Watts. They can do it. But a general player um, uh, can't. Is there any significant repertoire for the contra clarinets? I only know that the solo in reads La Fiesta Mexicana in the first movement. Um, okay, so significant solo. Let's start out orchestral stuff first. So surprisingly, uh, it does show up in some stuff around uh, 1900 is about when we start seeing it. Uh, Dundee's Fairval, the opera. Um, there is a uh, a brief solo in Richard Strauss's uh, Josef's Legend, uh, Josef's Legende, I think is probably how you say it. Uh, Dvorak used it in his opera Kate and the Devil. Uh, Cezanne used it in um, one of his light, later operas, and he actually used a contra alto in his opera Henry the Eighth. And then the opera right after that, he used a B-flat contra. Schoenberg uh, used it in his uh, five pieces for orchestra as well as his um, Opus 22, the four songs for orchestra. Um, you've got 
um, Olivier Messiaen has a long solo for it in his last piece, Le Clair sur la Dela. Uh, okay, let's see. There's a contra solo in uh, Asyla by Addis. Yes, uh, I still have not been able to fully get into Addis's stuff. If I, contra would be nice in more jazz. Yes, I, I absolutely agree. It's written solo in the score, and it gets the snarkiest bass line. It's great. Oh, yeah. It, uh, yeah. Uh, Addis is... is I it, I still don't understand his stuff. It's it's too much, I think, for me. All right. Um, as far as band literature goes, um, you've got, of course, Dionysiacs has a, a big part for it. Granger never used contra clarinet. Neither did Holst or Von Williams. None of the Brits used it. Um, and you, you mentioned um, La Fiesta Mexicana, Mexicana, depending on, I guess, how you... Yeah, Claire Sur la de la is, is just uh, absolutely amazing. Uh, yeah, so you, your band uses a B-flat paperclip, then we bought a Rosewood Contralto, and... Uh, yeah, uh, so modern composers just aren't using uh, the E flat contra much anymore. In fact, when I was compiling all the excerpts for my my book, I could not find um, contra uh, alto clarinet excerpts. So every contra alto clarinet excerpt in my book is from my own works. I can find contra bass clarinet stuff. Uh, but just not contra alto. Uh, did Sousa ever use it? No. Um, um, it just, it, by, Sousa, I think, was probably dead by the time that uh, they started to really become available. Patrick Gilmore had one in his band, but it was just one. I'm surprised that Granger didn't use it, but was all over the bass sax. That's uh, because the bass sax was far more common. Uh, remember, Selmer doesn't come out with their E flat contra clarinet until about 1930. They're not, and then World War II happens. No instruments are coming into America from France. You know, Nazis. And Granger doesn't really write anything past the 40s, so it's just not something that gets in there. Uh, bass sax was American made all the way and it was so easy to get a hold of. Uh, the band I'm in has an E flat contra player and he transposes B flat contra parts or just plays a bass clarinet. Yeah, and if you are a contra clarinet player in a wind band, you need to be prepared to play bass clarinet, E flat contra, B flat contra. In my arrangements, I choose between the E flat and the B flat contra depending on the range of the piece. Uh, yeah, and that's uh, entirely uh, appropriate. Now, here's what I like. I like using both. And why do I like using both? Because I get the best of both worlds. And if I just combine them in unisons or in octaves, I really bolster that um, low woodwind sound. Because remember what I said earlier. Look at our string or orchestra here. How many bases do we have back there we've got and a big one eight ten players and we should have that um woohoo thank you ratchet you rock uh private message me if you want to talk on stuff um but anyway um why do we not also have the same kind of lineup in our wind band. Well, we've got this row of tubas back here. Uh, they can cover it because, you know, the tuba is just louder than snot. So we should really start thinking fewer tubas, more low clarinets. Hey, you know, and all of a sudden, instead of being this bombastic uh, 
behemoth. Um, we now have something with a lot more subtlety, a lot more nuance, a lot more color. And so I have taken, in most of my larger band pieces, I have parts for both. <laughs> uh, I Ratchet, the, the computer is so far away that I can only read the letters. Uh, sometimes I like to include two bass clarinet parts and occasionally both contras. And, uh, Pugolo, in doing that, uh, it's... Um, that's uh, probably appropriate. We have three tubas for a medium-small band... And there are always balance issues. Uh, yeah. So, um, case in point, both symphonies two and three of mine. Um, I'm trying to think. Do I have the score to two available? I don't know where that score is actually. Uh, it's somewhere around here. Anyway, it you know this I've got in that ensemble. 78 players, two tubas, one bass tuba, one contrabass tuba. And I don't need or want any more because think about this. How many tubas are in there are there in the orchestra of the same size? One. You do not need more than one or two tubas. And, you know, you can do a lot with just that sound because the, the more tubas you have the the less you can do because they're just sitting there <clears throat> weighing down like me after a giant Italian meal are there contras in A? no uh, Schoenberg weirdly and perversely scored for an A contrabass clarinet in his five pieces for orchestra no one knows why. Um, he later revised the scoring and took out the contra clarinet altogether. Most of the times when the piece is played, I think that version is done. But when the uh, piece is done, um, uh, when the original scoring, it's always contra in B flat. John Barnes' chance was all over the low clarinets. Probably still is. I'm pretty sure he's still alive. Uh, get one of them on euphonium. They're probably enough euphoniums, too. Uh, agreed. Even in the brass section, we might be better to use a contrabass trombone or something for loud parts and let the tubas be mellow. But there should be at least two low reeds for every one of them. Bingo. Yes, yes, yes. So, you always want more low reeds than tubas. And this gets into this thing. Band directors want dark. They want this dark sound, and they can't ever balance their ensemble appropriately. Four tubas in our 100-piece band. Okay, 100, four tubas, eh, it's probably about right. Uh, always need more horn, yeah. Oh, I didn't realize he had passed. That must have been... Oh, John Barnes' chance. I'm thinking... Who am I... I'm thinking... James Barnes? Yeah, I'm sorry. John Barnes' chance died in the... Uh, yeah, no, he, he, it, he... The 60s or 70s. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm thinking... I think there's another Barnes. Yeah, yeah. Two contrapuses and one tuba. Nah, I... I, Buglo, I wouldn't. Uh, unless that is the exact sound you want. Now, that that does appear in some scores. Mahler 10, for example, um, has... Can the bassoon be used as a low reed sound? Sure, uh, but bassoons are, are really more of a tenor instrument. But, why, you know, bassoons, yes, you need them. You also need... You probably should have the same number of bassoons as you have bass clarinet. So, if you have... Two bassoons, you should probably have two bass clarinets. Four bassoons, four bass clarinets. Um, I could even see an argument for having more bass clarinets than bassoons. Uh, but you don't want to have just one or the other. In a wind band, you really do need both. And bassoons do not 
function very well as true bass instruments. Um, God dang it, somebody brings up contraforte again? It's like that instrument won't die. <laughs> Every stream, contraforte. They must, they must have done something right. Uh, replace tubas with chimbasos. Boom, problem solved. I am not opposed to bringing chimbasi into the uh, wind band. Um, it has been done in Italian wind bands, um, because obviously that's the home of the chimbaso. Um, but we'll save chimbaso for another, uh, stream. Um, uh, American Salute has a bassoon quartet solo in it. It's, um, actually a trio. So it's bassoon one, two, and three. I, I've played it a couple times. It's fantastic. But it is just a trio. I can always find. Take a shot every time someone mentions contraforte or subcontra bassoon. Man, if I drank, I would be drunk on these live streams. But uh, yeah. Mm. Okay, so contra clarinets. There are a few pieces other than stuff of my own pen. Um, upright sim serpent chimbasso only. Ah, so the bass horn. Base off a of Clyde. Uh, where's my off a of Clyde? It's, uh, actually my off a of Clyde's in my car. I should probably get that out. Oh, I'm not a bassoonist. Is there a bassoonist, bassoon in other keys other than C? Uh, there's the tenor bassoons that are in F and G, uh, pitched, uh, fourth or fifth higher. Just played it a few times. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a bassoonist, so that's kind of my, my area of expertise there. Uh, but anyway, um, uh, Pukalo, I do not think there's this, uh, uh, I take that back. There are, as far as I know, you mentioned E flat. Um, uh, I, two French system E flat tenor runes were made and that's it. So to, um. Yeah, you can't really say that a bassoon in E-flat exists. One bassoon in B-flat was made a uh, step lower. But there's a whole stream, the one of the uh, streams I did a couple weeks ago about that. You can watch that. I'll P PM you a list of Contra Alto wind band parts. Oh, yeah, I've got, I know plenty of them. It just, um, uh, you know, they were all, everything is in copyright and I just couldn't use them. Bassoon plus tuba equals off a Clyde, or is it bass sax plus tuba equals off a Clyde? Um, bass sax plus euphonium would equal off a Clyde, basically. Sax with a brass mouthpiece equals off a Clyde. Um, yeah, in fact, I've done that before. I have a video on my my channel where I do exactly that. Uh, yeah, there's the dinner octave bassoon in D. So it'd really be in the key of G, I guess. And there's all sorts of um, dulcians. Okay, so um, I was saying there are pieces other than stuff that I've written that use both contra clarinets. There's um, several pieces by Gunther Schuller. Um, if you really want to look at some... Um, hardcore low clarinet writing go look at some of the band works of gunther schuler um i have a band score of his where he devices the alto clarinets into at least three if not four parts um and he devices the contra altos into two and the contra bases into two which means you have to have two contra altos two contra bases and i think it's like four bases four altos now, there is a meaty low clarinet section. Uh, have they stopped making paperclip contra clarinets? Um, LeBlanc, yes. They went out of business 10 years ago or so. As Jared says, there are Chinese copies now. Uh, I don't know how you can get a hold of one. I don't know where they're being marketed from. Alta Zach's mouthpiece on a trumpet. Mm, yeah. 
As a Sinus and Alto Sax player, how easy it would be to switch clarinet, especially lower ones? Uh, lower clarinets are not hard. Uh, you know, I'm a bassoonist. Um, the lower clarinets are easier to play. Uh, particularly, I find alto clarinet to be the easiest of the clarinets to play and to get the best sound on. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and move over to scoring for bass clarinet. Uh, Grab my, my beast over here. Do I do master classes or private lessons? Absolutely. If you uh, want to do any kind of master classes or private lessons, just contact me. Uh, easiest way is you can contact me through my website. Um, yeah. And our lessons I actually do a really reasonable rate, and I can do that in person or through Skype. You just, have, you know, if it's um, in person, you got to be, you know, local. And, you know, I'll travel a decent ways to do that, but uh, preferably if you're in the DFW area. Um, Um, so, as a percussionist, how hard would it be to, um, to pick up the contrabass clarinet? It all depends on, uh, how strong you are. So, I can pick up the bass clarinet really easily, just like this. Uh, contrabass clarinet's gonna be double this weight. And so, um... <laughs> I do Skype, but it makes my computer commit Sudoku. Sudoku. Um, <laughs> you mean Sapuku? <laughs> um, yeah, that, that's that's funny. Um, yeah, that that's the the ending of or that's the Chike Six solo. So it's the only time uh, I've ever done an orchestral solo on bass clarinet. I played principal bassoon. Um, the TCU orchestra and there was no way in hell I was going to play the um, the terrible sextuple piano bassoon solo and so it's always done on bass clarinet and that's about as loud as it should be and the clarinet player was not going to do. Uh, my Wi-Fi can barely handle it. I've had to lower the stream down um, to barely nothing to go through. Uh, my upload speed on this uh, at home is just terrible. Um, yeah, it's marked P P P P P P P. It is perhaps the most extreme dynamic marking you'll ever see uh, though i think there may be some stuff in ligeti that's worse but yeah no it's it's literally marked sextuple pianissimo and you marked it in the bassoon down in the low register and that's just impossible to play so it's done on bass clarinet because it's easier and it's continuing a clarinet line okay so bass clarinet um we need to start, how many F's have I personally seen in the score? Four, I think. That's Tchaikovsky uh, six. Um, or you, I've seen Ligeti with nine F's, yeah. Yeah, because, you know, Ligeti, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I, I tend to not, uh, I, I try and keep everything between pianissimo to two P's to two F's. And if I really want to go beyond that, I'll do one more. Um, I don't think I've gone anything beyond three. Okay, so yeah, we talked about earlier, uh, I think there really should be a, a movement to be including two bass clarinet parts in most um, upper level band works. 
uh, because you've got the players there, bass clarinets are much more common than um, any of the others. Uh, there's not really a lot I can say on bass clarinet that's not covered other places. Um, you know, I could talk a little bit about uh, stuff like bass clarinet and A, but Jared covered that in his video he uploaded this week. Um, you know, more and more, uh, every, every bass clarinet player you'll see is using a low C instrument. I know junior high schools here in, um, here in Texas that have low C bass clarinets. Uh, have I ever seen a dynamic of just M? Yes, there are a few, um... Uh, Brahms pieces where he used just M. I think that's a really stupid idea. It, it, it does not make much sense. Would bass clarinet parts be doubled? Would two parts be four players? Um, Aster, I, I'm a big fan of one player per part in general. So I would not uh, envision seeing if you had two parts to have two players on each. You would just have, just like in the bassoon section, one player per part. The extra piece part of it should be left to player interpretation. Um, uh, da -da -da -da. So, uh, should it be left to player interpretation? Well, it, everything is left to player interpretation, but Tchaikovsky is very prescriptive with what he says. He means it, and... It's coming off of this long uh, B flat clarinet or A clarinet solo, and the A clarinet the clarinet player is going along and just piano pianissimo 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 and then it hands it off to the bassoon, and so. Uh, yeah. Uh, Aster, even one player per part of B-flat clarinets? Yep. Um, which is why I actually tend to uh, write um, several clarinet parts. Uh, so, I don't know. Symphony 3 has eight, essentially eight clarinet parts. Um... What is the best lyrical bassoon solo you know or have heard in your opinion? Um, oh, God. Look at any of the Tchaikovsky solos. I mean, look at the, the solo from the Slow Movement of Tchaik 4. I think that's one of my best. Um, the height of his romantic vision, it's fine for Tchaik. Yeah. Yeah. What is my favorite mode? I am not really a modal composer. Uh, I, I, I don't really compose much with modes. Um, so shall we move on to alto clarinets, guys? Yeah, let's move to alto clarinet. Uh, I want to check something real quick. Guys, my battery on my camera might die soon. If it does, the stream will just end a little early and we'll pick up at some point. But just to let you know, the battery is is dying on the camera. It seems like three or, three or maybe four B-flat clarinet parts is what's common, but the band I'm in has eight or nine, like one player per part myself. Um... Yeah, it depends. Number of, of B flat clarinets um, really depends on the number of trumpets you have. If you limit your trumpets to one per part, and in my opinion, trumpets should always be one per part, no matter what. There's no reason to double up your trumpets. Okay, um, run. Ah, yay for alto. It's the viola of the clarinets, not really. Uh, what do you think of a curved B-flat clarinet and a straight bass? 
Well, I mean, bass clarinet is basically already straight. You don't need to to straighten out the bass clarinet. Those are done for um, ergonomic reasons. Uh, you don't need to curve a B flat clarinet. Do things as simply as possible. If more curves you put in, the uh, more resistance you get. Uh, what's the time for the next stream? Okay, next stream. Um, if unless I if I die here. Um, Sunday, 2 p.m. Central Time. Um, we are going to have a massive live stream uh, all about the bass oboe because I am going to have a bass oboist here in studio. So we will have the actual instrument here. Um, and not only bass oboe, he will have a piccolo oboe with him. And so Sunday... 2 p.m. Central Time. Um, Matt will do a massive live stream. I'll put a bunch of word out. And, but um, yeah, we will be doing everything bass oboe. And I'm actually going to be doing uh, a master class at UNT with him. I'm not going to be doing it. Uh, my friend Mikey who is the bass oboist. will be doing a master class um, Monday night. Uh, does the resist apply through the whole instrument or just when you approach the bend in the instrument um, it's the bend it's it changes the air direction all right see you later Tony um, have fun at rehearsal I'm guessing you're probably on the other side of the world or maybe California It'd be only F oboe instead of a piccolo well I uh, Mikey has an E flat one, and um, I I prefer calling it a sopranino oboe. It's not um, it's not a true piccolo. Flugelhorns are just soprano tubas, so that's all they are. Okay, so let's talk alto. Um, our dying. Our, our dying instrument. Um, so uh, alto clarinet has not really been featured in band scores probably since the 1970s. Alfred Reed was probably one of the last proponents of it. Um, it said there's absolutely no reason to not include an alto clarinet. You just got to pound it through band director's thick skulls to say it's not a bad instrument. If a flugelhorn is a soprano tuba, what's a cornet? A cornet is a cornet. So think think of it three families. Trumpet slash trombone family, which is mostly uh, cylindrical bore. Tuba family, which is mostly conical bore, which the flugelhorn is part of the tuba family. And then the cornet family, which is a hybrid. So half conical, half cylindrical. Um, so the... So trumpet, mostly cylindrical, cornet, mostly uh, half conical, half cylindrical, uh, tuba, all conical, or as all conical as you can get. Okay. So, and I, I recorded a video this afternoon talking about that, but I don't think I'm going to upload it because I'm not happy with the quality of that video. So I may redo it in the next week. Uh, it's all in the tube. Yeah, it's all in the tube. And the mouthpiece design. And the mouthpiece design. Because, like, a uh, trumpet mouthpiece is very shallow, whereas a flugelhorn mouthpiece is very deep. Okay. So, uh, alto clarinet. Of course, these instruments need to be used. And they need to be used in numbers of more than one. Because a single one won't make much of a difference. If you have... Um, as I can't remember who said it, they had a you know clarinet section of nine, nine B flat clarinets, one alto clarinet. It's not going to make a difference. Why do you think it's becoming a dying instrument? Uh, it is such a a long story there of why it's becoming a dying instrument. Um, it's not that it's becoming a dying instrument. It's almost a dead instrument. It's we need need the paddles. Um, 
It, it has to do with band directors. It literally, I think every bit of it has to do with band directors who put their worst player on the alto clarinet and, you know, expecting, you know, uh, if we put him on there, we won't hear him because, you know, it's not an important part. And composer saw this and saying, okay, they're not p putting any interest in actually putting a good player on the alto clarinet. I've done several videos on it, yeah. Uh, the best one to watch is uh, Who's Afraid of the Alto Clarinet? It's a long, 30-minute uh, long lecture I did with Matthew Banks where we um, talk about it. All right, sorry, I got a text coming in. I got to answer my dad. Sorry, trying to work out some plans. Okay. Um, we put the only person who has an alto clarinet on the alto clarinet. That's probably a good uh, solution. If the person owns an alto clarinet, it means they're probably going to be dedicated to it. Um, I um, I like the instrument. It's, my, it's probably my favorite voice within the clarinet family. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, um, so we got the the E flat alto clarinet. There's also the F basset horn, and Jared talked about this during his live stream quite a bit. And there it, there is a tonal difference between the two. If you've got a true basset horn, if you've got a LeBlanc um, basset horn. Well, that's not really a true basset horn because it has the same bore size as this instrument, big 18 millimeter bore. Uh, and it's not going to have that same light uh, floaty sound that the true basset horns do. So you want a really small bore uh, basset and a big bore alto. And I think that's kind of what Jared has. Um, <laughs> time I've seen her using is Lincolnshire. Yeah, Lincolnshire has some of the great alto clarinet solos in it. Um, Granger knew what he was doing with the alto clarinet. He loved the alto clarinet and the bass clarinet. Uh, there is a letter from him uh, where he specifies the number of alto clarinets he wants to play Lincolnshire Posey. And he wants six alto clarinets and six bass clarinets. That's would be Granger's ideal. Think of it. That's a wall of low clarinets. That's 12 low clarinets. I should try swapping out the register vent. Uh, you think that would work, uh, Jared? Um, I, I might have um, a upper joint somewhere. Um, now this is... Um, we had one alto and one bass. You didn't have enough for Granger. The question is, how many B flats did you have? So, um, Jared, I actually uh, has the same one, same vent as my R13. So that my, my instrument there's a no blay. I don't know. Um, I guess I could probably order a register vent. That probably wouldn't be too terrible. Uh, 
One of my bands that will sometimes play the alto saxophone part due to lack of alto clarinet parts in the more modern scores. I would suggest not doing that, Julia. Um, uh, just because, just to show some respect to the composer. If the composer didn't write a part for it, don't create one. Um, that's just to me. That's a level of respect to the composer. Go ahead and switch to B flat clarinet or bass clarinet, whichever you're more comfortable with. Um, that so yeah that speaking as a composer i i don't want somebody playing an instrument i didn't score for in something i wrote it's it's just it shows a, a little bit a uh, level of integrity and respect that uh, you know, i i quite like should oh okay okay jared uh yeah well uh, you may have it back it you know since you have sent me stuff before um uh but yeah I'll, I'll talk to you offline jared uh let's see okay so uh bassett horn um other than stuff written in the 1800s i don't really know a lot of band literature that calls for bassett horn uh you've got the uh the mendelssohn pieces uh, you've got the Rimsky Korsakov pieces. Uh, yeah, Rimsky Korsakov wrote for Bassett Horn. Um, the late Strauss Sonatine. Um, should my band director get me a contrabass clarinet? Is it worth it? Uh, you need to talk to your band director about that. I don't know what your school's budget is. Um, School budgets are something that most students do not um, fully appreciate and how limited the budgets are. When I was a band director, I think we had a yearly budget of like 5,000 bucks and most of that got spent on either repairs or we had to provide reeds for all the students and mouthpieces and neck straps and court grease. Uh, so the band directors know what they need for their program. Uh, students go on and ask me, can you get me this instrument? Um, that was my director's decision, but I understand it will definitely suggest them that I just play my B flat. Yeah, I don't think that they will have a problem. Um, in general, is alto, band, and bass and orchestra. Yes. I, and even even that. Um, uh, Ratchet, you're not lagging behind. Every, there is like a 20-second delay on the, uh, on the stream, and that's just, you know, how it is. Um, so... Uh, Yes, I do not know a single orchestral piece that uses E flat alto clarinet. And just, there may be some more modern stuff by younger composers who have tried it. I have never seen it though. Uh, every orchestral score that even, even that says alto clarinet in it, and the words alto clarinet appear, it's F alto clarinet. Uh, in our band, we do fundraisers basically monthly. Um, fundraisers and band are a, a tricky subject, and school finance laws vary from state to state. Here in Texas, uh, fundraisers cannot um, be used to purchase instruments. That's illegal to do. Uh, I think there are a lot of alto voices missing in the band. Oh, yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, alto clarinet, of course, is one. Though, really, it is a tenor voice. Um, English horn, you will see in... Uh, Ratchet, I, I hope it's not uh, just... I hope it's just you that's dropping the stream. Um, I've got the stream up, and it appears to be working fine, though... Uh, let me know if the stream's dropping for anyone else. But yeah, the, the alto tenor range within the, the Woodwood section is very weak. Um, 
I'm trying to think. Other pieces that use bass and horn for wind bass. So there's the original 1923 scoring of Stravinsky's Symphonies of Wind Instruments. There's the Strauss Sonatines. Uh, well, I think maybe just the, the big sonatine from the Invalid's Workshop. Um, okay, that's good. So it's just uh, Ratchet has a, a squirrely internet connection. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think if there are other pieces. And there might be... You, you'd basically be looking more chamber wind stuff. More alto flutes would be nice. If the music calls for alto flute, sure. Um, I, I use alto flute all the time. Um, uh, and then, you know, that gets us all the way back up to the, the G alto clarinet. Mezzo-soprano. This is, this is really our true alto voice within the, the clarinet family. <laughs> That's actually the original key for it. Um, how rare are they compared to basses? Probably a thousand basses to one alto. No, I'd say it's much higher than that. Ten to one, maybe. Um, uh, I would say that altos to bassets are easily 100 to 1 if not a thousand to 1 um just i could probably find a thousand uh, alto clarinets before i found a single basset horn uh, but 10 to 1 probably for basses to altos i would think uh altos uh sorry uh that's texted again. Um, altos are really pretty common. I in my my little town, uh, sixteen thousand people. There's um, three alto clarinets, two privately owned, one owned at the the high school. So three alto clarinets here in this town. Um, at least two people in town own bass clarinets. So yeah. Bassets to G altos. Oh, God. Um, honestly, there's probably more G clarinets out there than there are basset horns. Um, simply because of the popularity uh, in Turkey. Um, yeah, a lot of the, the alto clarinets will be in bad shape. They can be fixed up, but that's, they're still out there. Uh, but th this instrument being uh, really popular in Turkey means and i get them cheap it's like jared i don't know how much uh you paid for this one uh jared i i did a trade with jared so i got this uh clarinet here and he got the bell that's on his octo contra alto this g clarinet here uh i think i paid 120 bucks for uh, so just mark it there is uh, that said, the, all, all your G clarinets are pretty much going to be in the in a different system, so your players aren't going to um, use it much. Okay. I think that we're going to go ahead and uh, start wrapping up for tonight. Uh, in general, my thoughts, always uh, more low clarinets within your wind band. Yeah, it was like 120 bucks. Yeah, that's, that's about what I paid for mine. So... Um, I'll take some last minute questions and let's keep it qu quick guys, because 
I think the, the battery on the camera is just about dead. Um, hopefully it'll last just a little bit longer. Um, the nearest music store to me has two alto clarinets you might remember in Jared's last stream. Um, I, I've slept since then, but uh, yeah, it, finding alto clarinets is not hard. They're on eBay all over the place. I mean, it's, people get rid of them, and there's us nerds out there who you know grab them up. My my friend Matt, who's an alto clarinet specialist, just got a brand new um, buffet. Can you do a quick recap of what went down? You just got here. It's gonna go uh, live as soon as we finish. It would you know we've been going an hour and a half sans, and um, to recap everything, we've just kind of been going over usage and. Uh, uh, style with the the low clarinets and we remember sunday afternoon 2 p.m central time um um 2 p.m central time we're gonna have a big live stream all about the bass oboe it one general question if i want to buy your books you mentioned the revised version of book one should i wait for the new edition or just get the current one um go you can go ahead and get the new version um uh, uh the, the the current version uh new version probably won't be out for another year what's on the docket for next week uh well i've got the the bass oboe oh for jared's um fixing an e-flat uh so yeah I've, I've got lots of stuff that i'm going to be doing uh this weekend video wise but um Book two, it, I don't think is going to get any more updates unless there's just minor errors and typos that I need to fix. Uh, book three, uh, it soon I am waiting on someone to send me a couple photos right now of the final instruments, um, and it will be going as soon as I get those. It will be going directly to the publisher, and hopefully I can have the first copy of volume three in hand next week, and I can start actually sending those out. Um, so, all right, anybody have any more questions? Um, yeah, the bass oboe stream is this weekend, 2 p.m. Central Time. Uh, I, we will have bass oboe here in studio, uh, actually, as well as a Sopranino oboe, piccolo oboe. <coughs> so... I probably should tell the oval player this, that we're going to be doing this, but he's staying with me. He has no choice. He's getting free room for a few days. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. If you want to order books, I'm, I, you know, order them directly from my website. That's probably the easiest way. Um, but, uh, yeah. If there's any other questions, go ahead and shout them out now and um what am i doing next weekend then i don't know i haven't planned that far out but anyway um next week oh uh next week i probably am not going to do a it depends on when Mikey's flight is. Um, I'm going to have to coordinate with him. If we do a stream next week, Thursday evening, I'd probably do the upper clarinets then. So B flat, C, A, E flat, D, A flat, all the, the wonky high ones. Um, we'll see. But um, yeah. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this now because I don't think the uh, camera's going to last too much longer. I'm surprised it's lasted this long. All right, there's no other questions. I will see you guys Sunday afternoon, uh, Base Oboe Special.